While the causes of global warming are debatable among those gathering the Copenhagen Monday will be advocates of action on climate change. And Demiake Mwakalieli recently spoke about the issue with Graciela Chichensky, the co-author of the book Saving Kyoto. The United States should have a commitment to do what it's trying to do. Because the U.S. is the largest emitter in the world. It's closely followed by China. China has no limits because it's a developing nation. The U.S. is not obeying the limits that it signed because it decided not to ratify it and is not obeying it. So a major goal at Copenhagen is to diffuse this war-like atmosphere, this cold war about warming between the United States and China. How do you see that being resolved in terms of addressing or helping Africa, one of the least emitters of gas emissions, yet one that bears the largest impact? Well, I would say, frankly, that's the most important issue. Because a whole continent like Africa emits exactly 3% of the global emissions. China is somewhere between 18 and 20%. But of course, China has 1.3 billion people. But the United States, with 300 million people, emits 26% of the emission. So Africa is not contributing to this problem. We have a world that is divided. It's divided into the wealthy nations that have most of the GDP and only 20% of the population, and yet they are the one causing the overwhelming majority of the emissions. And the other part of the world are poor nations, mostly now in Africa, Latin America, and the small island states. And the developing nations are 80% of the world, and they emit a small minority of the emissions. But, as you pointed out, they bear the brunt of the consequences. Why? Because climate change is mostly affecting those who cannot protect themselves against the elements because they live very close to the earth, to the ground. So if you have a lot of money, you can create artificial heating, or you can create shelters, you can move up, you can protect yourself against the elements. People who live off the soil are totally exposed to the weather conditions. In Africa, you have droughts combined with floods because of the instability of the weather, and it's already causing an increase in the impact of malaria which is a vector disease that moves with a change in temperature. What would you say is the responsibility of countries like the United States and China to Africa and how they should weigh that argument when still contributing towards climate change? 1992, it was signed by all the nations in the world. It is international law. It is prior to the Kyoto Protocol. It was signed and ratified by the United States. That convention says, black and white, the responsibility is with industrial nations. And this is why China and the developing nations don't have obligations to reduce emissions, and Africa doesn't, and Latin America doesn't. We need to find a solution where we can all work together, because this is a global problem. I am proposing two proposals, like I did in the Kyoto Protocol with the carbon market. The first one, it's a mechanism to diffuse the situation between China and the United States. Both of them can save face. So there is a good possibility that this proposal that I have made, which I am told will be officially on the table in Copenhagen, presented by some island nations, will be voted and will become a solution. The second part of the proposal. The first part is financial. The second part is technological is to use the clean development mechanism that already exists to build power plants in Africa. And the power plants I'm proposing will not just be renewable energy or clean, they will also be able to suck carbon from the atmosphere. By doing so, the building of those plants will come directly from the Kyoto Protocol, not from government donations. The CDM has already transferred many billions of dollars, but most of the money has gone to China. We need to send that money not to China. China has a lot of dollars. We need to send them to Africa and not send money. That doesn't do anybody any good. We need to build productive resources. We need power plants in Africa. 
going to be really interesting to see what comes out of this Copenhagen conference. There's so much pressure. So much pressure, and especially Africa expecting quite a lot. They're saying it's going to cost them about 26 billion every year to mitigate the consequences of climate change. Exactly, and there's also you the know. concern of, of development and needing exactly. to develop. Need for food, uh, you know, climate uh, effects on people. It is a lot. Absolutely. We hope we hear some good news from this soon.